So we're standing here looking at a field that has common water hemp in it. Um, and one of the issues with common water hemp is there's a lot of well-known resistance, particularly in some of the southern states. Um, in Michigan, we know we have resistance to ALS inhibitors as well as glyphosate. So there's multiple resistance. So it's pretty difficult to manage. Right here, we've got a couple different plants. We've got a male plant and a female plant. And that's one of the issues is we get a lot of crossbreeding. So when resistance travels, that's one of the things. Looking at this field, uh, this is a field that last year they didn't notice any problems in. And if you look back behind us, you see that there's a lot of water hemp that has escaped the control measures. So basically what we need to do is find out if this is resistance and what herbicides it's actually resistant to for the grower to be able to come up with a good strategy to manage it in the future. We look at this particular field. Um, any weeds that we have out there are actually competing with the soybeans for yield, um, as well as it makes a huge hindrance as you're trying to go through in combine. So as we look at uh, trying to manage a field that is completely infested, um, many times it's very difficult for a grower to even get a piece of equipment in there to harvest those beans. The other issue that we have is when we harvest um, a field that has potentially resistant weed seed, that seed gets caught up in the combine and the next field you go to is the next place where it's probably gonna spread. So as we talk to growers and looking at potential issues, for example, with water hemp, with mare's tail, or even with palmer amaranth, um, if a grower sees something like that, that's usually the field he wants to harvest last. So he has a lot more time to actually clean out that combine before going to the next field. As we start thinking about herbicide resistance in general, really we're worried about glyphosate resistance because many of our soybean fields are Roundup resistant. But in addition to that, many of the weeds that we have been finding that have glyphosate resistance have resistance to more than one herbicide site of action. So some of them will have resistance to Roundup and also an ALS inhibitor, like something like Classic or First Rate. And that becomes a concern while we're trying to actually um, manage these weeds because we just don't have the types of chemistries that we need. The other thing, um, as you start looking at your fields, if you think you have resistance, one of the things that we generally tell people to look for is, okay, should that weed have been, been controlled with the herbicides that you used? If they should have, um, do you have some weeds in that field that were actually controlled? A lot of times you'll see completely dead plants, some that are kind of alive, and then ones like this that completely survived. Um, in those cases, uh, you really should be thinking about trying to get some of these fields sampled and um, get that sent to the diagnostic clinic. We do have a new uh, weed diagnostician that will be starting, um, that's Dr. Erin Hill, and she'll be doing a lot of sampling and um, screening for resistance. And basically, if you have, uh, she'll talk a little bit about that. The weed species that we're really worried about is things like Palmer amaranth, which is a pigweed species common water hemp, which is another pigweed species. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of glyphosate resistant and multiple resistant horseweed or mare's tail. That's probably the biggest widespread one that we've been seeing. We're also concerned about the ragweed species, both giant ragweed and common ragweed. And we have found some low levels of glyphosate resistance in common ragweed in Michigan. Horseweed or mare's tail, a lot of people call them uh, mare's tail, but the actual name is horseweed. Um, has become much more of an issue in Michigan. One of the big things that we have that makes it difficult to control is that it comes up usually in the fall. And in the fall we have these rosettes, but we can also get some spring emergence. One of the key things when we look at control of um, mare's tail is, especially when we're looking at spring applications, we always try to get it before it gets much taller than four inches tall. Once it gets taller than this, it's very difficult to control particularly when we start talking about some of the multiple resistant uh, uh, mare's tail samples that we get. Um, we've got a lot of glyphosate resistance. We have a lot of resistance to the ALS inhibitors. So things like first rate and classic, and there's a lot of different premixes that have either one of those in there. So one of the key things as far as controlling this weed is we really need to be thinking about getting control before we actually plant the soybeans because unless we have Liberty Link soybeans planted, we do not have any effective control measures post-emergence in soybeans. So we're really talking about making sure that we have adequate burn down, and a lot of times that would either include 2,4-D ester or the product Sharpen, and making sure we get some residual chemistries in there to help prevent any of those uh, spring emerging 
uh, horseweed plants from growing up and causing an issue in a soybean field. So as you can see in this field, common water hemp is a problem that has lasted through the season and perhaps you suspect that you do have a glyphosate or ALS resistant water hemp population. So the next phase would be to collect some seed from these plants and send them into diagnostic services where we can actually test that in the greenhouse under controlled conditions. Now, with a species like common water hemp, it's dioecious, which means it has male plants and female plants. So it's important when you're sending seeds in that you are correctly identifying and sending in the female plants, which would have seeds. This plant here in front of me is a male plant. It has visible pollen and anthers that are sticking out. And if you rub the plant, you'll see that the debris in your hand does not contain any seed. This plant over here beside me is a female common water hemp plant. So the seed heads do look a little bit different if you're lucky enough to have them side by side. Now to determine that it's a female, you wanna still break off part of the plant, crumble it in your hands, and you will see that you have, at this point of the year, you have some dark black seeds, and those are gonna be viable seeds that we can actually use to test for resistance in the greenhouse. So once you've identified your female plants, either common water hemp or palmer amaranth, you're going to collect the seed heads from a minimum of five plants. And when you're doing that, you can clip off just the portion where the majority of the seed would be and place those in paper bags. Make sure that they're sealed so that you're not leaking any seed. And you can either mail those in to diagnostic services or you can bring them in person in. And um, we're fortunate that the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee is um, funding the free screening of these for, for soybean growers. So it's not gonna cost you anything to send the seed in and get it tested for resistance. After we get our results and we report them back to you early in the new year, you can use that information about if your weeds are resistant and what they're resistant to, to look at recommendations from Dr. Christy Sprague for uh, your particular situation.